Welcome to the sci-fi book layout design project in Adobe Photoshop. So the ultimate idea here is to create your own sort of sci-fi vehicle and out of photos collage and some paint over effects and some painting to basically you know match different parts together and then bring it together into a landscape and put it into a uh, both uh, cover design for both the front and the back of a cover. So uh, if we go to let's see here my example here you can see a sort of book cover layout here we're going to end up doing which um, this one doesn't have uh, everything laid out yet there's just basically some placeholder text I call it vehicle invaders by myself and you can see I, underneath I have a, um, uh, a book cover from the internet that I found that's just a generic sort of book where you put book title author name and so forth and so you could find that on the internet just look for you know to to a book cover design or something like that I think I typed in and um, basically just copy a layout like this so ultimately it'll be in a, in a size like this which is if we go to image size is um, if we switch it to inches it is uh, 20 by 12 inches which uh, would give us a little bit of margin for the nine and a half by 12 so if you think of nine and a half by 12 uh, standard book cover you get um, if you double the nine and a half, you get um, you know 19 inches, and that gives you an inch margin. So it just gives you a little bit of extra uh, measurement to fill for the spine here. So um, these are the measurements I want you to use. I'll have this in the PDF for the slideshow. But 20 by uh, 12 by 300 for resolution for the ultimate book cover. Now, um, so you're gonna have to ha work with se several different documents. You'll have um, a collage sort of element where you start to bring in all these different you know vehicle parts and uh, I'll show you um, the originals that I have in here so um, basically on their own layers in their own group this is what I recommend doing is mask out each part so you can see any of these if I hold the alt key on it has has its own mask and um, you know in each one is the original and then what I've done is kind of uh, basically uh, from there, I've kind of come through and made these into smart objects. So all I do to create a smart object from uh, an actual photo is just right click on it and go to convert to smart object. You have to do it in the gray part of the area and here it is convert to smart object. Um, so most of these are already converted but you can see I have a couple of adjustments in here ready to start to uh, bring it all together. But we'll do a separate tutorial on that, how to do the adjustments. Today I'm just kind of going over the project. You can see all these different parts I haven't even, you know, combined together. I'm still thinking about how I would combine all these things together. Um, but I want to share uh, basically where do you find these photos and then how to start the masking process. So we covered basically the, the, the idea here, the layout. Ultimately it'll be in here. So my main image will be over here. And we'll bring it into some sort of landscape. So I have a landscape here that I've created uh, that I actually took at Salt Lake, which I think will work pretty well. But I also found a cool landscape image off of Pexels.com, which I could also use or combine. And so I'll show you some of those sites. So if you go to uh, Pexels.com, you can uh, type in, for example, construction vehicles and find some construction vehicles or you can type in tractors and find some tractors. Um, I also typed in uh, plane. I think I typed in plane here and I got this airplane here, or no jets, I typed in jets here. So um, I got this cool jet, which I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna use the wings for it. Um, and the other site that's kind of cool is CG Textures, also known as textures.com. You basically have to sign up real quick and you get, I think it's like 10 photos per day or something, but it's free. So once you sign in, um, when you click on one of these photos, um, basically you'll be able to download the first two, the free ones, and the, get the, the medium size, which is the highest resolution you can. The other ones are premium where you have to pay, but if you use at least the medium size, they should be big enough for your, your purposes. The, the site that I like is the man-made site. There's all kinds of different cool things you can pick from here, um, from you know, fuse boxes to heavy machinery, to um, you know vehicles the, under the vehicle category this is where those construction vehicles are at so lots of different images to choose from now once you have the image you saved it you brought it into Photoshop I have the jet in here 
you're then going to want to mask it off. So to use the masking tools, the one that I recommend using is the new object selection tool. It works quite well for most most uh, images. And all you got to do is um, you can draw over the actual object and see what that does just by our key dragging over the entire thing. And sometimes that does a really good job with the Q key. That actually did a really pretty good job except for these little areas here. But it didn't quite get the wing done. The other way you can do it is um, click on select subject at the top here with this tool selected. The option will be available up here. And a lot of times that's the one I usually do as a go-to. It usually starts off as a better result and then I can work from there. So this is an easier fix to kind of fill in that area. I got to add the wing. To add the wing here, all I got to do is hold the shift key and drag across. Just make sure you cover the entirety of the wing. And then once you release, you'll see it, it's like a rubber band just snaps to that area. Kind of recognizes, hey, you want to add that to the selection. So I can hold the shift, drag across that area, add that selection. Um, looks like there's a little bit in between the wing here that I want to subtract. So I'm going to zoom in just to make it a little bit easier on myself uh, to see. And switch to my selection tool again, hitting the W key. And I'm going to hold the Alt key this time instead of the Shift. So Alt will subtract from selection, Shift will, will add. And it's basically just by clicking this or when I hold the Shift key, you know, clicking on this guy here. But I'm going to hold the Alt key and drag across this a little bit. And once I release, it does a pretty good job. It looks like it didn't quite make it. So let's try and um, go across the wing part and just make sure that it is covered. That looks good there. And then I go across this wing part here. Let's see. Sometimes um, I have to zoom in just a little bit more. And let's try it one more time. Drag across there. And it looks like it's going to quite get that area. So you might have to do some masking, uh, hand masking. Uh, it's not that big of an a deal. I can switch to my brush tool and just make sure I have um, black as my foreground color. And uh, I can click, or sorry, white is my foreground color. And click here and click here in quick mask mode and kind of, you know, basically bring that back. Um, if you take it too far, just switch to the black. And basically, yeah, and just holding the shift to click, click, a couple spots. It doesn't have to be perfect uh, because I don't know if I'm going to use this whole thing. But I kind of want to, the main idea here is that I want to, you know, basically mask out the, the whole plane from the environment. Once I have the uh, selection done by, again, hitting the Q key or click on this little mask icon, the quick mask, I can then go to the permanent mask icon, which is down here on the, the bottom of your layers palette and click that. And now you'll see alpha transparency in here. So then to bring this uh, image into my final file, which is, um, you know, going to be the, the 20 by... Um, uh, 12. I think I'll, I'll bring it into instead the construction area here. This is 11 by 17. So um, I'll just drag this up and then drag to the tab and then drag down and then release. And then you'll see it in here. It dropped way below. So I just got to drag it up in the stack order here. Uh, let's go up. There we go. And keep going up to the very top here. And there it is. It's kind of small compared to the other vehicles. So um, I might want to scale it up, but maybe just use the wings as an element again for this, this jet um, engine here. Typically, you don't want to scale up images, but if you make it in a smart object first, so this is where I'd right click on the layer and go to convert to smart object. Then I can hit control T and then uh, grab a corner and kind of scale up. I'm thinking if I want some wings to kind of pop out a little bit um, somewhere along here, I don't know. I'm still not sure if I'm going to use wings, but maybe that big will probably be the most in terms of the size. Maybe I'll use the tail wings. I don't know. Uh, I'm still kind of thinking about my design here, but I'll turn off these two layers and all of these to reveal what I have so far that I know for sure. So this is kind of a starting point. I have uh, essentially sort of this, uh, the ends of a tractor in the back, these little lifts kind of stacked and then the full tractor here but what I've done is I kind of re remove the uh, wheels I'll hold the shift key on here so you can see it um, and then I have the front end of another sort of tractor and a guy here that I got from the same image so I just duplicated this image twice if I show you the image um, uh, this image here and remove the mask this is what it looks like so yeah so we'll see uh, how this comes together. 
you know, um, and until next time, we'll uh, continue and we'll start talking about more of the process, the techniques of adding these adjustment layers and how to start bringing these together. But for now, start uh, figuring out where your photos are, you know, go to pexels.com and cgtextures.com or textures.com it's called and look for, you know, construction kind of vehicles, airplane kind of vehicles, basically anything that kind of you can combine and make look look kind of sci-fi and um, eventually we'll bring it into this book design. So this is the first tutorial in the series. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Until next time, see you soon. Cheers.